ECOWAS delegation in Niger have for the first time seen the former president, Mohamed Bazoum, who was ousted by the military coup plotters last month. Niger's governing military council confirmed the arrival of the ECOWAS representatives sent by President Bola Tinubu as part of the last-ditch efforts to persuade the mutinous soldiers to restore constitutional order. The delegation, led by former Nigeria's military head of state, Abdul Salami Abubakar, also met with some of the senior military officers that seized power from President Mohamed Bazoum. ECOWAS have continued to reject the coup and insist a return to civilian rule. Also, the sanctions imposed by the regional bloc on Niger has made the situation worse for the population. The local currency have slumped under the weight of these restrictions, and ECOWAS defense chiefs say the standby force is also ready and they have fine-tuned details of a potential military operation to restore Mr. Bazoum if ongoing negotiations with coup plotters fail. Well, earlier, ECOWAS defense chiefs had met this week in the Ghanaian capital, Accra, to fine-tune details of a military operation. Meanwhile, the new Prime Minister, Al Zain, said that the generals who overthrew uh, President Mohamed Bazoum during the July 26th coup will do him no harm. Mr. Zain also insisted the Niger coup leaders had no intention of collaborating with Russia or with the Kremlin-backed mercenaries of the Wagner Group. It had been reported that the coup leaders had cut off water and electricity to President Bazoum's house where he has been confined since being ousted and threatened to, to kill him if other African countries make good on a proposal to restore him to power through a military intervention. Earlier on Friday, President Bola Tinubu warned that there will be grave consequences if Niger's military regime allows Mr. Bazoum's health to worsen under house arrest. And for more perspective on this uh, delegation's visit and update and being joined, by African Affairs Analyst Victor Ahai for more on this very issue. Good to have you on the news at this time, Victor. So first off, let's begin with the expectations on the meeting between the ECOWAS leaders and the military officers. What are your expectations? Well, um, I expect that at the end of the day, um, I, as I'm hoping, common sense will prevail. It was a bloodless coup. And so I do not expect um, any situation that will degenerate into any um, bloody situation, as, as it were. Uh, all of this dialogue, I believe, are things that should have been done in the beginning, even before the threats were made. And um, we probably would not be getting the tense situation that we're having around the uh, uh, sub region at the moment. Um, finally, Dialogue, which is the most important thing, and other non kinetic methods are being employed right now, and as should be. Um, I am envisaging a situation where um, there will be some sort of compromise. I am not very sure that they might allow, I mean, for negotiation, you obviously you reach yourselves halfway. I'm not very sure if the generals would. Uh, agree to restoring Bazoom, and I think that if there are, if there's any um, attempt at forcing them to restore him by uh, military coercion, uh, things might get messy. Um, already, we're aware that Mali and um, Burkina Faso have sent fighter jets, which means Ecuador is not exactly one anymore. Um, and if that if that happens. Uh, I'm not even sure that even Nigerian soldiers will be united in the war because there's already a division. There are people, a lot of people do not want any um, bloody situations. So what I have to say at the end of the day, depending on how the conversation goes, there's a situation where they might have a time to where it has been done at other times uh, for a quick return to military rule. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what... Um, 
acquires wants, and that's what um, the world will want, not the victory regime. So I'd expect a quick uh, timetable that should restore Niger to a democratic. Um, with a democratic government to, right. to Niger. Let me quickly come in here, yeah. Mr. Ohai. You know, you mentioned earlier that you're not too sure the military leaders would restore President Bazoum as the president of Niger. Why do you think that? What can you tell us about what you, you're suspicious about? I don't know what assurances they will be given. I don't know what carrots will be dangled before them. If you're just assuring them of um, safe passage for its sake, and that nothing will happen to them and all that, and for you to restore by Zoom. Um, I'm not so sure, having tested power, that that's exactly what these people want. Um, and I think that the question should be reasonable as well. Um, if you go, if you insist, then it's not negotiation. If it's negotiation, negotiation is about meeting each other halfway. Nobody is happy at the end of the day. You give in. If you left the military alone, they will want to be there for as long as possible. Um, that's on the one hand. If left to ECOWAS, they want Bazoum to be restored immediately. But a midway is saying, okay, if we can't have Bazoum, then you guys can't stay for, you can't stay forever. Let's let's have, if it's election or whatever, let's let's have a, a democratic government in place within the next six months. That seems like a reasonable alternative to me. Um, um, so I, I think that's how we should look at it. I don't know what the negotiations are. The insistence on Bazoum may have consequences. Right now, nothing has happened to me. If there's an attempt to force Bazoum by way of any military intervention, the first casualty might be Bazoum. Mm. Indeed. And talking about the casualties now, we understand the West African leaders revealed that there will be possible military intervention if the negotiations, the diplomatic negotiations fail. That is, the military intervention will be, will be there'll be a forced standby, uh, well, operation rather, in Niger. How likely do you see this happening if the dip, dip, diplomatic uh, uh, negotiations between both parties fail in the end? Well, um, if I may use the word bluffing, uh, when I say bluffing, I don't mean that ECOWAS cannot pull it off, obviously. The Equals Army is bigger than the Niger Army. But I think the threat of what is to come is usually more powerful than what is to come. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that they're trying to, it could part of the propaganda to, to scare them into doing what they want. Uh, but it's not to say that they cannot make good what they, have, what they are threatening, which is what I fear. Because you see, war usually, like every war, can be, be a war is needless. Dialogue can end war. What causes war is the ego, usually the ego of the leaders, both leaders, uh, leaders on both sides. Because what will then happen is if you have made a threat, then you don't want to, you, you, leaders fail to think about the consequence of the threat on the lives of ordinary people, even one troop. You know, every life should count and should be very, very important. When you bring your ego in between, the consequence is that some lives will go for it. Is it worth it? If you can discuss and settle this thing without losing any life, it's usually better. But what I fear is a situation where if they've made a threat, they want to make it good so they don't appear like they are weak. The truth is, true strength is invulnerability. What I'm saying may appear uh, contra uh, contradictory, but it's not. A strong person is a person who is able to say, I'm sorry, or, okay, no, um, let's look at it the other way. Don't be afraid to step back if right. you have said something. And, right. I mean, look at the consequences. For me, that is leadership. It's not because you have said it, you must do it, or the world will look right. at you as being weak. That is, for me, is not leadership. And right. remember, there are others. Whether we like it or not, if we go into this war, there will be consequences. And that's and a fine might... place to live with, Mr. Victor. I appreciate your insights on the news at 10 tonight.